It's 12.30 p.m. on a quiet Friday afternoon. Bilbo Chuck Williams has just pulled over for his afternoon break. As he drinks his coffee, a random recently escaped yobbo named Miguel 23768 was being a grog gruff. At that very moment, Miguel jumped into the cab and pulled a gun on poor Chuck. Chuck, deciding not to be a hero after having lost half his watch in a hold-up three days before, calmly took orders from the thief and stood on the side of the road. As Miguel got ready to hijack the lorry full of petrol, he suddenly realised he didn't have a valid HGV licence and could not legally drive the tanker. Just when he thought his luck couldn't get any worse, life dealt our would-be robber another losing hand. Unbeknown to the dysfunctional champ, the police had followed him all the way from prison, surrounding his mum's blue sports car. Thinking the situation could be made more guavo by getting back to his car as quickly as possible, the perp decided to run through the police to his car, letting off a tirade of bullets and loud noises. Miraculously, Miguel was not hit by any of these bullets. As the Muppet entered his car, he realised he had left it in reverse and accidentally rammed a tree, before speeding off, leaving the police to pick up the pieces. As Miguel was thinking about all the trouble he was in, he suddenly realised he was a Time Lord, and so travelled back in time to rob the tanker. However, he still didn't have a HGV licence, but decided this time to run a longer route round, which avoided the police and minimised the aggro he'd get from his mum. As the rejected Doctor Who ran towards the first area of shelter from the police, he inadvertently swallowed a group of immigrating flies, giving our bad guy a much needed boost of energy. By the time he'd made it over the keyboard of destiny, Miguel was feeling rather tired. Luckily, his car was in sight and he was able to drive off while the police tripped up on a rather dangerously placed electric cable which the council had failed to put underground. I doubt it will take our inept fuel thief long before he finds himself back behind bars. We can relate this scenario to the application of Hess's law. The total enthalpy change is independent of the route taken, so route 1 equals route 2. The amount of energy transferred in both routes is the same. Route 1, delta H1, is Miguel running from the tanker through a barricade of police with a direct route to his car, but not stopping. Route 2, delta H2 and delta H3 is Miguel taking a longer, less difficult route, but with an advantage of him being able to stop halfway to charge himself up. This is known as a stability point. In chemistry, we apply Hess's law to calculate unknown values, such as in bond enthalpies and enthalpy changes that cannot be found directly by doing an experiment. So by applying our chemical equation to Miguel's movements, we can see that we need to work out the value for route 1, to work out the energy transferred in delta H1. We know the values in route 2, delta H2, is plus 114.4 kilojoules per mole. The plus indicates that the reaction is endothermic. It takes energy in from the surroundings. This was Miguel swallowing the glucose flies. For delta H3, the value is minus 180.8 kilojoules per mole. This part of the reaction is exothermic. It gives energy out into the surroundings. This was Miguel climbing over the keyboard. So to work out data H1, we add these two values together, plus 114.4 plus minus 180.8, which gives us an overall exothermic reaction, minus 66.4 kilojoule per mole. If we look back at Miguel running route one, we can see that energy is transferred out indeed making it an exothermic reaction. Hess's law is important for fire and explosives in the third year, as well as introductory chemistry. Understanding it now will help you throughout the course.